Hey YouTube, it's your boy Magnificent and we're gonna be changing the calipers to this Magnificent look here from this blah look here. So let's get going. We make the streams louder. Go ahead and take out the lugs of the tire. All right, so the front caliper is a little bit different than the rear calipers. Um, you're simply gonna do a couple of things. You're gonna take out the two 21 millimeter bolts back here. There's one here, one down there. Then you're just gonna pull out afterward. You're gonna go ahead and take out this T, I think this is the T10. Um, no, it's a E, uh, sorry, E10, E10 inverse Torx. You're gonna take out, uh, there's a little bolt there, hope you can see it, you'll see it later. You'll pull this out, this is the sensor. And then after that, you'll pull the brake out. And then once the brake is out, I'll show you the rest. But very, very simple. All right guys, so step one, you gotta come show them here. 18 millimeter bolt, you gotta get that removed. So, all right, so now I'm, I've got the two caliper bolts off. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull these out. Now these are real tight. So you just gotta kind of have shimmy, you know? See? Just shimmy in, shimmy in, shimmy in, shimmy in, shimmy in, shimmy in, and bam, out. So, a couple of things I suggest. Bungee cord, right here, you're done. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, go ahead and stop. All right, so I'm gonna bungee here. And you can do it whatever way. You don't need a bungee, really. I use a rope last. But the goal is just to make sure that there's no tension on this uh, brake. Next step, you're gonna go, wanna get these pins off, right? There's one here. And just remember, the pins, they're gonna be facing when you put it back on the end points will be facing towards you, right? So you get these pins off, easy to do. So at this point, here's what happens. Asking off these rotors, you see the outside, because I'm gonna paint the middle, just to give it a little contrast look, and also get away from this rust. If you're gonna be doing this anyway, you might as well clean up what's here. So this is the quickest way I found to, uh, to uh, get this mask off. Just kind of give yourself some slack, and you're gonna kind of curve it. I'm using the expensive stuff, by the way, because if you use the cheap stuff, when you take this off, the adhesive will stick to the caliper, I'm sorry, the rotors, and then, again, then you guys stand off anyway. The good 3M stuff doesn't do that. So I'm gonna use the basics here for that, and then I'm gonna use the cheap stuff. No, oh, I'm sorry, this is the expensive stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna use the cheap stuff, which is uh, like this, to go like around, right? Do one of these. There's no biggie. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just do the whole thing. You can also use masking paper, that's an option. I might do that to save myself some tape. But I've done it without masking off the rotors too, quick job. And it's just easier to do it this way. You get, don't get over spray, the whole works. So, if you use normal sandpaper, which I will use as well, but I just wanna do, do this quickly, so. I'm gonna just go attach this and get this as, as, uh, at Menards, some kind of hardware store. Uh, I'm gonna put high heat primer and high heat paint on it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just, easy way to do it, get the sides. Did have a mask on, by the way. Do as I do, the same as I do. I'm gonna do the same thing here. He's gonna scratch this up a little bit. You and I scratch, scratch, scratch. Um, I'm just gonna scratch up a little bit of this. Some of these areas were already scratched up. You're wondering what happened here. You know, this in my other video, I was putting on those ferratas there and they told me that uh, that didn't need any, any modding, but I put the wheels on and because of the concave, it was actually hitting my caliper. So I just had to get a grinder and grind this off just a little bit. And so that's why um, it looks a little indented because I had to put some primer on it so it wouldn't rust. So that's what kind of forced me uh, ahead of schedule to paint the calipers because of that situation. So now we're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing for here. And for the inside, it's so dirty, it's crazy. You'll find that this thing is dirty. So one of the best things to do is get one of these. So this 
so that comes in handy using different kinds. You can get that, like I said, in any store. All right. So you kind of get in the nooks and crannies. These won't be seen, but hey, if you're here, why not clean it out, you know? All I'm trying to do is get all the brake dust off. One of the things I do um, pop on there is a uh, brake parts cleaner to get, get off all this gunk and stuff. So I'm gonna get that high heat primer. I'm gonna knock this out real quick. All right, high heat primer. What I love about high heat primer is because it's high heat, it's supposed to have a heat gun that shows that it cures real fast. <laughs> heat gun. All right, last coat of the high heat paint, and that's all she wrote, folks. So now let's go to the calipers. All right, so I'm just getting the brake dust off. I'm using all my resources. You know, I cap these off, of course, right? You don't want anything in there. But I spray some brake clean in there, you know, real carefully. I use, you know, these discs, and uh, I'm using some sandpaper. Uh, this is like, what, 320 grit? I've already roughed it up a little bit, you see that? You don't have to rough it up this much, but just enough to get it going, to be able to grab onto the paint. And I just wanna grab the brake dust I'm gonna in here, because of course, the more debris in here, the harder it is for it to adhere. And you know, the last one, you ain't gonna see this inside, but you know, I'm like Steve Jobs. It's all about what people don't see. It's about perfection, you know? So anyway, so once I sand this, I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, um, fast clean on the outside, and I'm gonna show you how to easily paint this while it's uh, extended. It's really simple because using high heat paint, high heat paint dries real fast. So you'll be able to just paint one side, flip it over, paint the other side with, with it already dry. So let's go. All right, just using fast clean. Just using this fast clean, I'm doing my last cleaning. And uh, once I'm done with that, I'll do my first primer. Getting all the insides. Everything I can. I'm using a microfiber. Usually I don't, I usually use something else than a microfiber, microfiber last, but this is all I got right now, so that's what I'm using. And yeah, so let's go back to the paint. So this is how you do it, guys. Ghetto, but it is what it is. I prefer not to take the calipers off and work perfectly on the other side. You can either hold it or use it like I did last time. Actually, I didn't use a bungee. A bungee is too elastic. I used a little white rope. And I'll show it to you the, uh, before the video's over. But uh, you simply held it covered everything else and I'm gonna put my first coat here light coat of high heat primer on one side everything's covered so don't worry about what I'm spraying I'm gonna get everything good here and uh, once I get that done I'll let this dry actually I'm gonna use a heat gun get all the nooks and crannies get all the hard parts can man So, heat gun. Mm. And voila. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do our first coat. So you can really, really switch sides as you need. Because it dries to touch very, very quickly. Second coat, just doing a light coat, right? Already covered all the areas, so I don't have to be as careful as I would normally. But what I love about high heat is again it dries so quickly, so I'm gonna afford to uh, not have the whole thing exposed. We'll see. So it literally dries to the touch. I mean, I would say in 30 seconds. Obviously it's high heat, so it needs to be able to do that, right? So you notice that shortly. So I would say, Matt, a minute, maybe a minute and a half, to the touch, dry to the touch. Not bad at all. I mean, just to make sure you know I'm not a high paid actor. I mean, look at this area here. This is what it's there. It's awesome. So now I'm gonna switch. So you literally can just 
hold it here, you know. And what I like to do is, I had it right here last time. Um, you just gotta turn it. You're limited in the space you have. So I'm gonna just try to get it up here. Cradled almost, so look at what you got. Um, let's see what we got here. Put it like so. Yep, right there. So even though I don't, I don't even have the uh, hook on it, I mean, I'm gonna put something on here just to be safe, but um, even without it, I would be able to do it. It's just gonna hold. Right there. Right there. See? Now, I can do that right here. I'm gonna take this off so that I can be able to get this out here, because otherwise it'll be like having a panty line or something. Yeah, make sure you just dry it off before you sit it down. So dry for about maybe 15 minutes, probably more than needed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back on. Rip it all off and then we are gonna be good to go. And voila. So I'm gonna start yanking all this off. So if I was by myself, I would literally just put this on the hook, but ain't no thing. So you put this in first, and once you put it in, Owie. All right, stop. Go. All right, so you put that in, right? Gotta make sure. All righty, so as you can see, you got a little bungee cord right here just sticking in one of those uh, caliper bolt holes, and we just have kind of strung around around here like Spider-Man. See, I've got the uh, rotor sanded down right here so you can paint it. And I've got it all taped off so we don't mess with the part where the brake touches. And I've got a towel over just to cover everything in the back so we don't get any paint on anything unawares. So I'm gonna primer this and paint it and I'll be right back. Um, and then when you're painting, make sure you uh, tape up the pistons so that way you don't get uh, um, paint where you shouldn't. Um, also, you might wanna um, tape up that part before you paint as well. Go. All right, I'm trying to get this rear caliper in is painting the rear end. Yeah. So two things you got to do. I don't know why, but because the the pads are so tight on the rotor. Here's what we did. You can do whatever way you want. So we put a towel, not to mess up the paint. And you're gonna get a dead hammer, dead blow. You're just gonna go wham, 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 wham. It's like that. Like and, Hulk wins. And you gotta make sure that you include those sound effects. Without sound effects, it won't work. <laughs> so that's it. I mean, we literally just, see? I mean, but this is, looks right, easy. Right now it looks easy, but, but before, before it's it was like, like, ugh. I mean, you have to give it all you got. And if you're one person doing it, good luck. Like, here's um, Hulk. I'll pay here's for your Hulk therapy Buster. on Monday morning after you do this yourself, if that's what you gotta do. So just heads up. All right, anyway, that's it. We're gonna finish it off and we'll be good. Alrighty guys, so we finished it up, it's all painted and primed and all put back together. Now that was a pain in the butt to get back on, so just remember you may think you're doing it wrong, but you really just need to hit it harder. Hit that bell. And subscribe and like. Come on guys, my name is just sending a great job Melanie. All right, here she is. Bad at all. Night and day difference. It really makes it pop. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.